Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Transform 3D node. And uh, this is going to be a super short one. So right off the bat, I'm going to take the opportunity to thank everybody for subscribing, liking, and uh, the amazing comments we get in the uh, comment section in the community all the time. So I really appreciate everybody kind of like feeling my vibe of the uh, channel and i hope we keep growing and with that i just want to let you know real quick memberships are open now and they include uh, three different levels at the uh, youtube uh, required pricing of course <laughs> but uh starting out we have a uh, party reply to comments um, member only videos that'll be going up here shortly member shout outs and depending on the tiers we also have weekly member tutorials basically once a week i'll create a tutorial that you request me to make within the world of vfx we'll also have a member troubleshooting videos so i'll uh, create a tutorial covering the members issue that you're having with a specific project and uh, I'll also have ask me anything privately so you'll get a uh, personal contact info so if you have any issues with vfx or editing, filming, anything, or it could be anything in the music world. I'm a music producer and own my own recording studio. So whatever you want creatively, I can answer. For those higher levels, uh, obviously you'll have priority for a weekly tutorial requests and all that stuff. So check it out. If anything, at least uh, just support the channel. It's a lot of work that goes into this and I want to keep doing it. And there's tons more uh, nodes to cover and I would like to keep it up. So with that said, let's jump into Fusion and I'm going to bring in a shape. So let's just bring in a shape. Let's transform our shape back just a little tiny bit. And we're going to bring in a transform 3D node. So if we hit shift space, transform 3D, and we're going to add that behind our shape. Now the transform 3D node itself doesn't do anything differently than you can do within the transform of each 3D object. However, some 3D things don't have transforms in them, so we're going to have to use this. But the transform node is good to know you are actually transforming something. So instead of transforming your actual shape, we can always leave those at zero and use the transform node to transform it back. So anytime in your uh, little node tree here, you see your transform, you know, you're moving something. That's one reason I'd like to use transform nodes just to remind me, Hey, I moved this shape. Additionally, if we have multiple shapes and, uh, we had a merge 3D node, so let's bring in a bunch of shapes. And we'll make this a uh, cube. Let's uh, move our cube up a little bit there. So if we have tons of shapes that we're building something, instead of going through and moving every single one, if we need to move it and keep it all in order, we can just use a transform node and now we can just transform all of them together. And you can place this anywhere in your node tree and it'll transform anything that's being fed into it. Now on your transform node, you have the typical translation on the X, the Y, and the Z. You have rotation on the X, the Y, and the Z, and you can change your order of them all as well. You can also change your pivot location the X, the Y, and the Z, and you can lock your scale or unlock it to uh, change the scale of everything all at once. And of course, if you remember, we, we discussed this use target for transforms. So if we picked, we could pick whatever transform we want to use to transform that. We can invert our transform with the click of a button, and then we can import transforms now mind you on this import when we import transforms i may or may not have mentioned this before if we're importing transforms 
the only thing it's importing is transformation data. And the only types of files you can import transformation data is from a lightwave.lws file, max scenes or a .ase file, Maya scenes or a .ma file, or a .xsi file. And unfortunately, I don't have any of those file types on my computer. But if you select import transform, you will select whatever object you want to transform. And like this will give me a error saying it's unsupported file format. But once you do, it'll populate with objects. And within that, you select your object from that specific scene that you want to transform. For instance, if we had one of them scenes in here and you had a tree over here, you would select that tree as the object and it would retarget your transforms to that tree for that scene. So that is the import transform. Now, sometimes with your transform 3D node, if I zoom in here and let's look at our little gizmo. If I look at the gizmo on our actual shape, sometimes with your transform 3D node, if that gizmo hits the exact same spot this is at, it'll jump. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it to do it. I'm going to try. Put this back to zero. Let's raise this a little bit. Why? And it's not going to do it today. <laughs> it's not glitchy, but sometimes it'll hit that and you'll see your entire shape skip to the top or skip to the bottom. And that's just because uh, it's hitting the exact same location as your other one. It's just a glitch that happens. And sometimes if you just save and reload, it'll go away. And sometimes it won't go away. So, uh, just mind that does happen when you're transforming other shapes that have their own transform information on it. So that is the transform 3D node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.